So let's settle the body. Adopt a stable, comfortable, upright position, serviceable for meditation. So we think about keeping our feet flat and our back straight, torso open. Hands in the lap right over left with the palms upturned and the thumbs gently touching. Our eyes are gently closed or slightly open, making sure we let in enough light to remain alert. We try to avoid slouching or leaning. We also let go of any unnecessary tension in the body. Relaxing into a stable, comfortable, upright position. We try to cultivate the sense of letting go of attending to the outside world. Allowing sights and sounds to be as they are without investigation. Constraining our awareness just to the body and mind. Concentrating that awareness in the present moment by attending closely to the physical sensation of the air, moving into and back out of the tip of the nostrils. Noticing quickly when anything other and that one physical sensation is arising in the mind and without judgment or frustration, lifting your awareness up from those distractions and placing it gently but firmly again and again on the breath.
deep in the mind is more calm and generate a broad, altruistic motivation. Thinking of using our time to establish and deepen ways of thinking and acting that are beneficial for oneself and others that allow oneself to remain connected to a sense of peace, tranquility, ease, and that give rise to actions that are often naturally beneficial to sentient beings. And to separate oneself from the tendencies and the habits and the states of mind that are not constructive, not beneficial, states of mind that agitate and disturb our sense of peace and ease. And that when they arise, often generate actions that can cause harm to others. Thinking of transforming the mind in this way to be of greater and greater benefit to sentient beings. And then with that motivation, we'll continue our contemplation of all the steps that give rise to bodhicitta, the wish to achieve enlightenment for the benefit of all sentient beings, without exception. Previously, we covered the first three steps. Recognizing that all sentient beings have played the role of caregiver, mother, father, countless times over beginningless past lives. Contemplating the kindness shown by the mother, the father, the caregiver. And then generating the wish to repay that kindness. The next step is to reflect. After generating this strong desire, this strong wish to repay the kindness of all mother sentient beings, we contemplate our condition the existential condition of all sentient beings, all kind mother sentient beings. We think that just like oneself, 
every sentient being deeply wishes to be happy. It's the guiding force, the guiding principle in the lives of all sentient beings. And yet, just like oneself, all sentient beings are devoid of true, permanent, everlasting, uncontaminated, genuine happiness. So think about how this characterizes the experience of those you're close to, and others in your life. Allow your heart to open to this existential condition, affecting not just those, but every sentient being.
and then generate a strong wish for the happiness, the pure, uncontaminated happiness of all sentient beings without exception. to hold that wish, that strong aspiration, single-pointedly in the mind. Contemplate that not only are sentient beings bereft of genuine happiness, they meet with suffering again and again. Contemplate the suffering of the different realms of existence. Recognizing that unsatisfactory conditions permeate the experience of all ordinary sentient beings. Again, allow your heart to open to this painful reality.
and try to give rise to a strong, stable aspiration that all sentient beings be completely free of all of these painful conditions. And then contemplate that it is unbearable that kind mother sentient beings are in such a state, bereft of any real happiness and meeting with painful conditions over and over. I myself must take responsibility for freeing sentient beings from this experience of suffering and dissatisfaction, even by myself alone. Will I take responsibility for leading all sentient beings out of sorrow and confusion and install them in a state of perfect, uncontaminated happiness?
And then think that the only way for sentient beings to receive such a benefit is for them to become enlightened. But in my present state, also overwhelmed with suffering and afflictions, I'm only of limited benefit in order to achieve my own goal of leading all sentient beings into the state of enlightenment. I must first achieve that state. Only then will I become capable of making good on my promise, my resolve. So focus your mind on generating the determination to engage in all of the necessary training, follow all of the steps of the path to enlightenment for the benefit of all sentient beings. And then when you're ready, we'll come back together. And we'll dedicate. So recollect your altruistic motivation. And think that by having contemplated in this way, you've actualized that motivation, created positive energy in the mind, which you freely offer for the benefit of all sentient beings without exception. Thinking may it serve as a cause and condition to eliminate war and conflict, poverty, famine, disease, disaster, all painful inner and outer conditions. May it fully ripen the minds of all sentient beings 
May they quickly meet perfect teachers and arise in a state of full enlightenment. May I too achieve the state of enlightenment in order to work for the benefit of sentient beings perfectly. May any obstacles facing the Guru's long life be completely dispelled and may I and all sentient beings in this moment come under the joyful care and guidance of enlightened beings. May we be guided and protected until we swiftly achieve that state of enlightenment. Thank you.